What's up fellow programmers and welcome back to this tutorial series on how to code a Connect4 game in Python. Now guys, here we are in the code and we left off with this print game more method and the modify turn method. Now, before we actually make our game loop and all that stuff work, I think it's appropriate to write out all the rest of the functions that we're going to need for the game. And the first of those functions is called check for winner. So we're going to say find check for winner and it's going to pass in a chip. Now, this one's a little crazy. This is going to be in charge of checking all the rows and columns for chips that are four in a row of the same color. Now, to do this, there are multiple ways, but for our way, we're going to keep it a little bit more simple and easy to understand. And I know it's not the most efficient way, but it is a way that works. And we're going to just make four for loops, one that's in charge of checking the horizontal spaces, one that's in charge of checking the vertical spaces, and one that's in charge of checking the diagonals and, you know, both directions of diagonals. Now they're going to all be kind of relatively the same. So first, we're just going to start with check the horizontal spaces. We're going to say for y in range of rows. And in this for loop, we're going to have another for loop that's going to say for x in range of columns. And we're going to say columns minus three. And in here, we're going to have an if statement. And that's going to say if the game board at x and y is equal to the chip and the game board at x plus one and y is equal to the chip and the game board at x plus two and then y is equal to the chip and finally the game board at x plus three and y is equal to the chip then what we want to say is print and we're going to put quotes in a new line we're going to say game over and then print out the chip that has one so we're going to say comma chip comma more quotes in a space and then we're gonna say wins with an exclamation point. And then we're gonna go ahead and thank them for playing. So thank you for playing with a smiley face. Now it's giving some errors and that's because I accidentally threw the word the in here. So let me get rid of that. And now it checks out. We are basically checking this horizontal space here. If all four of them are of the same chip type, we're going to make sure to print that out and let them know that the player has won. Now on top of this, we're also going to go ahead and return true because this is a Boolean function and we'd like to just return a Boolean value. That way uh, it's just quick and easy. That is all you need for the horizontal loop. Now we're going to basically take the same thing, kind of copy it and just modify a little bit. That way we don't have to write everything out again. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change this to check the vertical spaces. Now for this one, it's going to be the exact same thing. It's still going to be rows and then columns minus three, but instead of adding one to X every time, so we're going to remove this part, we're going to just keep X the same value. But instead, the thing that's going to be changing is the Y value. So with that being said, this is going to stay the same, but then Y plus one, and then we're going to do Y plus two, and then finally Y plus three to make that work. And that's honestly all you need to do for that. And we're going to go ahead and copy this another time. So let's go ahead and put that down here. This time it's going to change a little bit. This first for loop here is going to be rows minus three. And then the second one is going to be three comma and then columns. And this one's a little bit different than before. So obviously we're checking diagonal values and those can change quite a bit. We're going to keep this first one here the same, but the second index on is the values that are going to be changing. So the second time that we say game board in the statement, we're going to say X plus one and then Y minus one. Then we're going to say X plus two and Y minus two. And then finally, we're going to say X plus three and Y minus three. So that's going to check the upper right of the game board down to the bottom left, those um, indices in there. That should work for that. And now we're going to check the other way. So we're going to need this one final time and make sure to say check the diagonal spaces. And if you want, you can actually tell yourself, hey, this is actually going from top left to bottom right and then you can kind of just you know make a little note here that way if you ever have to edit it or whatever you can easily do that so we're going to go from top right to bottom left in this past one so for this final loop here we're going to still keep the first for loop as rows minus three but for the second inner for loop we're going to erase what we have here and we're going to replace that with columns minus three now once again the diagonal values can change quite a bit so with that being said we're going to keep this first one the same and these are the following ones that are going to be changing so for the second game board we're going to say x plus one and y plus one the second one we're going to say y plus two and x plus two and then x plus three and y plus three for the final one and the last thing we're going to need to complete off this function completely so this is obviously checking for each case that will be true but for every other case, we want to return false. So make sure you're outside of any kind of for loop. So we're going to go at the bottom here and notice how this is the line that begins my first for loop. I'm going to make sure I'm out of that. And then I'm just going to say return false. So that function is going to serve as a great utility to us later on in the game. And now it's time to move on to the next function. 
All right, guys, now it's time to create another function that's going to be called the coordinate parser. And let me open up paint to explain what this is actually doing. Now, the way that we have the game set up is that the game board is letters on the top and numbers going down the side. So obviously the user is going to have to put in some sort of coordinate such as like, you know, a zero. We need some sort of function to take that input string, parse it out and then turn it into stuff that the computer can actually understand. Basically, this function is going to be charge of like, let's say, you know, the user is playing the game and they enter in a zero, like I said, that's going to go into this function here and basically it's going to spit out some sort of coordinate I don't know, it's gonna return like this. That way it actually references in a spot in the array. Obviously A0 is not a valid index in the array. So it's just nice to have some sort of parser to handle that. So let's just start coding it. So we're gonna define a function called coordinate parser. We're gonna take an input string as our parameter. And here we're going to initialize an empty array with two indexes in it. It's going to be called coordinate. We're going to say, it's just gonna be full of none times two. That way it fills up two spots in there with just like a null value. Then it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to say if the input string at zero is equal to A, what we want to say in here is that the coordinate that we just created at index one is equal to zero. Now, remember, it has to be index one because the um, columns is the second set of indices in the two dimensional array, and we have to change that. So if they say A, which is the very first column on the game board, um, that should reference back to an index of zero and that needs to go in the second part of the two-dimensional array, which would be one. That's why we have to set it up like this, and I'm gonna continue on, and it should make more sense as we continue. Now we're going to need an else if, and we're gonna say a similar thing here, input string at zero is equal to the letter B. Then what we wanna do is coordinate at one is equal to one. And make sure you only have one equal sign because you're actually setting a value, not comparing it. So you kind of get what route we're gonna take at this point. So I'm just gonna copy this else if here, and we're gonna need it a few more times. So we're gonna need it for C, D, E, F. And then the final one would be G, but just in case they input something else, we're going to print like that it's a valid. So we're going to, make sure these are nicely spaced out and then one final else and here we're going to print invalid coordinate now we just need to change the letters here so g f e d and c we also need to change the coordinate that's set to so this is two three four five and six and the final thing that we need at the bottom here is that the coordinate at index zero is equal to cast it as an int with the input string at index one and then finally we need to just record Turn the coordinate array that we created in here and that shoots it out back to us. So that's awesome. That's going to be another great utility function to use later on in the game. Now let's create another utility and we're going to call it is space available. Now what space available is basically doing is it's just going to check, hey, is there already a chip in this space or is there not a chip? Is it free? Is it not free? Yeah, it's a really simple concept, so it should be fairly simple to understand. So we're going to define is space available and the parameter is going to be intended core coordinate because obviously this is the coordinate they're trying to go to we need to check that and this intended coordinate should be a uh, two index array the first index should be a row and the second one should be a column and with that being said let's just set up our if statements to reflect that we're going to say if the game board at the intended coordinate of zero make sure you have two sets of closing brackets because you're you're referencing a spot in this array and this array and then you need a second set of brackets and then intended intended coordinate at one if that is equal to a red chip this right here then obviously we want to say hey it's not free we just need to return false in here we're going to return false then we need an else if with the exact same thing but a blue chip so we're going to copy this here put that here and then change out this red chip for a blue one so if that is equal to blue we want to also return false and then if none of those match then we just need to return true turn true so guys that's all you need for this function here and that is super simple and it's going to be a great Thing to use later on in the game. Now, I know you guys are probably getting worn out by now, but trust me, we're almost done. We need one more helper function, then we can actually start creating our game loop, and then we should probably be done at that point. Let's create another function, which is going to be called gravity checker. Now, as I had explained in part one, we need a function that will check not only if the, the coordinate is free or not, but we should also check if it's actually valid for gravity, because obviously in real life, you just plop a chip in here and it falls all the way down. But in the computer, there isn't gravity unless we tell it that there is we need to make sure that you know if there's no chips in these spaces they can't just plop it here it will actually by default other you know just return false 
they can only go in this space because there's, you know, this is gravity. This is the uh, where the chip would fall in real life. It can only go here and it can only go here. Obviously, that also applies to cases where if there is already a chip in this spot, then it can go only here. It can't go here as well. And it can't take up this one either. So with that being said, let's design our function. So we're going to define a function called gravity checker we're once again going to have an intended coordinate because they obviously want to go here we need to check if that's valid or not so let's logically think about how we're going to tackle this problem when we call this method and we pass in an intended coordinate let's say like our intended coordinate is i don't know a5 we have two different situations that we want to address. One, assuming that there is no chip there already. If they're going to A5, they would be talking about this space here. And by default, we already know that this is the bottom of the game board. So we don't need to really check here. We already know that this is valid, assuming it's free, that, you know, gravity would work in this case and the chip would just, you know, rest here on the bottom of the board. For this function to work, we need to calculate the space below it. And that's what we're really checking. So if they're going here, we need to calculate this coordinate and check, is there a chip there or is there not chip there and you know so on obviously for the bottom row there will not be a chip here so we can simply handle that with a case of if the row is equal to six then it is valid but before we get to that part we have to first calculate that actual space below first so we're going to say calculate space below we're going to say space below is equal to none times two and that's kind of what we did with this coordinate parser up here we just want to clear like an empty array and to do this we're going to say space below at zero so its row is going to be equal to the intended coordinate and i wish i could type but the intended coordinate at zero because that's also the row plus one so we need to calculate the row below the row we're trying to go to similarly we're going to copy this once again and this the column index so the index at one is literally going to be equal to the same column because the column won't change and we, we're not really worried about that now that i, I had explained that stuff earlier and we already have calculated our space below coordinate we can now check is the coordinate at ground level. And to do this, we're going to say, hey, if the space below at zero, so it's row is equal to six, then we know it's at the ground and it's valid. So we can go ahead and return true. And then the other thing that makes this valid is, is there a chip below the space I'm trying to go to? So obviously we've already calculated our space below. And let's just say we have like two chips here and we're trying to put a blue chip right here. Now we know the space below because we've calculated it. Now we just need to simply check, hey, is there something there or is there not something there? And lucky for us, we have a function we just wrote, is space available that can do that for us. So to address this scenario, we're gonna say, check if there's a token below. We're gonna say, if is space available, and we're gonna pass in our space below is equal to false, then we want to return true. And you might be wondering, wait, why is that? Why should that be equal to false? Well, this function returns false if there is a chip there, and that's what we want. We want there to be a chip there in order for us to put a chip in the space above it. So this needs to return false for this whole function to return true. Then finally, just get out of this if statement and just go return false. Because if these two cases do not apply, then it is not a valid coordinate. Okay, guys, thank you for paying attention up to this point. Now we are ready to do the fun stuff, which is now we have all our functions. So let's create the game loop to operate the game and just call on these functions as we need them. So lucky for us in part one, we created the game loop and it's literally just one line. We haven't done anything in here. So let's remove this comment. Let's uncomment our while loop. So similar to other tutorials that I've done, a good way to, you know, swap off turns from us, the user and the computer is to, you know, just use some math with the modulus operator. So we're going to say, hey, if the turn counter that we created, if that divided by two has a remainder of zero, then that means that it's our turn. First thing we should do in here is go ahead and print out an updated version of the game board. Then since it's our turn, we should use a user validation loop to ensure that we're typing in stuff correctly. So we're going to say while true. So in here, we're going to say the space picked is equal to input with a new line. And we're going to ask to choose a space with a colon and a space in here. Now we don't need to cast this to anything because this should be a string that re is returned. Next, we need to take this input from the user and turn it into an actual coordinate. So we're gonna say coordinate is equal to the coordinate parser method that we created earlier. So we're gonna call it on, on our coordinate parser method we created earlier. It takes a parameter of input string. That string is here. So we're gonna swap that out. So we're gonna pass in the space pick to that parser method and we're, it's going to return a coordinate for us. Now that we have that coordinate, let's create a try catch loop or a try accept loop in Python 
to just do a few things for us. The first thing we need to do is check if the space is available. And to check if the space is available, we need two things to be true. One, there needs to be no chip in that space and the gravity needs to work. So we're gonna say if is space available, and we're gonna pass in our coordinate. So if that's true and the gravity checker with the intended coordinate of our coordinate here is also true. So if both are true, then we know that's a valid coordinate. And in this if statement, we need to modify the array. So, uh, you know, edit the game board array. And we actually created a helper function for that in part one. And I realized just now that I actually named it the wrong thing. It should not be modify turn. It should be called modify array. Change that to that and copy this. We're gonna need this down here. So in this if statement, we know both things are true. So say modify array. And the thing that we're going to pass into it is our coordinate that we are going to, cause we know it's valid. And since it's our turn, we're going to pass in the blue chip. Now, obviously you can make it whatever chip you want. And I mean, you can even make it any emoji. You can make like a fire truck or a frog or whatever. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to pass in a blue chip. Now, not only did we modify the array and we know it's true, but we need to break out of this loop to make sure that our turn ends and then it goes on to the CPU. Now, if this is not true, so if this if statement fails, we need to prompt the user for another space because um, the one that they picked is not valid. So we're gonna say else. And in this else, we're going to print off not a valid coordinate and we make sure to indent this. This is not a else outside of here. This is an else for this inner if. So make sure that's indented properly. And then outside of this else, but you know, kind of outside or lining up with the try, we can put our exception here, accept, and then print off error occurred. Please try again. That way, if any errors that we're not foreseeing come up, um, it could just handle it and then we can move on. Now, outside of this try catch loop, but still within our turn loop, so still in this if, but outside of here, we're going to make a new line and backspace a little bit. So outside of the while loop, and that's going to line up nicely like this. We want to check for the winner. So we're going to say winner is equal to check for winner. And we're going to pass in our chip and our chip is the blue one. So we can copy this and just pass it in here like that. So that's going to just check if um, there's a winner or not. And we'll address this later. But then the next thing we want to do is increment our turn counter. So we're going to plus equal to one for that. And obviously that's up here. So we could just, we're just going to increment that by one. That way it will move on to the CPU's turn. Now that's all we need for our turn. Now backspace once and then we could say it's the computer's turn. And then there's gonna be a giant else, very similar to how we have this set up. So in this else, make sure it's indented properly. We're gonna have another while true loop in here. That way it validates the CPU's choices to ensure that it picks a proper one. And in here, we're going to say the CPU choice is equal to and in an array, so create a set of brackets. For index one, we're gonna say random.choice of possible letters. And if you remember possible letters, it's from part one. It contains all the letters that um, are, are the columns for the game board, and it just ensures that the CPU has something to pick from. With that being said, we have chosen some sort of letter from here, and then we could do comma space. And now we need to pick a number. So we're gonna say random.randint at zero and five, because now it needs to pick a row between zero and five. So now that we have a CPU choice of some sort, we don't know if it's valid or not yet, we should check it. So we can say CPU coordinate is equal to the coordinate parser method with a CPU choice. So just like our own um, choice, we need to pass their choice in as well to, you know, modify it in a way that the computer can understand. Then below this, we need to say if is space available with our coordinate that we just parsed. If that's true and the gravity checker with the coordinate that we just parsed once again. If both of those are true, then we know the CPU is okay to put something in that spot. So we can just say, just like up here, copy this stuff. They also need to modify the array and break. But instead of um, our blue chip, it's going to be a red one because obviously they're evil, so they should be red. We don't need an else here because we're not telling the CPU that it's wrong because um, that would be telling the user that they're wrong because they're running the program. The CPU, if it does not have a valid thing, it's just gonna keep looping and looping and looping until it gets a valid one. So we don't need any sort of else here, but we do need to get out of this if and out of this while loop. And then once again, um, increment our turn counter by one. And then we need to check for the winner. So we're gonna say winner is equal to check for 
winner. And similar to up here, we're gonna actually pass in a chip of some sort, and it's going to be the red one here. Okay, so down below this else, so outside of it, we need to backspace to make sure that we're lining up with it, but we're out of it, but we're still in the while loop that operates the whole game. Every time this loop is finished running, we need to say, hey, if the winner is true, so if our check for winner method returns true, we need to instantly just kind of print out the game board and end the game. So we're going to say print game board one more time and then break. So we break out of the whole loop and we end the game and make sure to update the game board real quick before we end it. And we know that someone has won, which is awesome. OK, guys, that was a super long process. So thank you for watching up to this point. Now we are ready to actually launch the game. So let's do it and let's actually test it out. All right, let's click the play button and see if what we did is glitchy or not. So click play. OK, we already have an invalid syntax at line 85. Let's go fix that real quick. Oh, I just forgot a colon. My bad. Um, now that should be valid. So let's just put that back here and run it again. Once again, it's complaining about invalid syntax at line 111. I think I forgot another colon. So that's my bad. So 111. So go ahead and put a colon up here after this if. All right, guys, one more thing to fix before we actually launch our game. So go to the top here. And this is going to sound a little crazy, but I kept running into a bunch of bugs and weird like out of index or out of range errors and somehow the way to fix it is it looks like I have a space here but not here so make sure to add a space after every like little array comma the end here make sure there's spacing and as long as that's like that it should work <laughs> I don't know if someone could explain why please tell me down below but I don't know maybe the the indices are getting washed up with each other but somehow that seemed to fix it for me so if we run our game now we could test gravity so I, I should try to go to a zero and it should tell me that it's bad so a zero we're bad okay now let's do a five let's do uh you know b5 c5 and oh look we can win right away so let's do d5 it should stop the game and tell me that I won so d5 and awesome it says game over the correct chip wins and yeah we are done playing so that's awesome thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed it. If you experienced any bugs at all, please comment down below and I'd be happy to help you out with solving them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. There's lots more fun content like this coming out within the whole year. So make sure to click that red button, like I said, and thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next one.